So I've been asked to explain my concepts of how I approach radial keratotomy eyes and how I help them see and why this has been so successful over the last three decades for patients of radial keratotomy complications from practically all over the world. And it's become a passion for me to help these patients despite the level of complexities that they come with. So here's how my brain starts thinking when I see an RKI. Basically, if you look at your eyeball, right? This is the back of the eye. And let's consider all this normal. This is where the retina is, your optic nerve is right here, and all this is normal, okay? Let's focus on the front of the eye. The front of the eye here has a lens, okay? That's a natural lens in the eye. And you have a cornea here. Now your cornea is what has all these RK cuts, okay? These were 95% deep, remember? That was your protocol of which your doctor did. Even though I never agreed with real keratotomy surgery because it went against the anatomy of the eye, and I never did a single one. It's, it's amazing how I have become the final destination for RK patients from around the world. I do respect every surgeon who did this though because they did try to help you and many of you enjoyed vision with the RK until now. So, real keratotomy, let's go through the concept. These are cuts made in your cornea to take a steep cornea which is nearsighted and make it flatter. So you started seeing with that cornea. Remember your doctor did cuts with diamonds, uh, diamond blades on the eye. And this was originally originated in Japan and uh, Russia in particular. And this was the concept of decreasing the shape of the cornea to correct the nearsightedness, for nearsightedness only. And then some of them had astigmatism correction with it, called astigmatic keratotomy. And that added to the help of the astigmatism. Over time, all these RK cases, the cornea became even more flatter. This is what the Perk study proved, which is a large, very, very, very well done trial by uh, in the United States. And that showed that the cornea became even flatter over time. So people from being nearsighted actually become farsighted. And here's the problem. They are now becoming farsighted when they've already lost their reading because they now they're over 50 years of age, right? This was done in the 80s, the RK. Now, when you're over 50, you already lost your reading from presbyopia. You need plus lenses to read. That's why they're called magnifiers or cheaters. In addition now, you need plus lenses to see distance, so it becomes a double burden. So patients are very distraught. They usually come after the age of 50. And by this time, they have early cataracts too, or they may have scar in the cornea. So how I approach these cases. Whenever I see these cases, I do not worry about how many cuts the patient has. I've done even patients over 40 radial keratotomy cuts and corrected them, and many of them are at 20-20. Yes, over 40 cuts. So people have four cuts, eight, 16, 20, 32, various combinations, and along with that, astigmatic cuts. The reason I don't worry so much about the cuts is, is not the cuts, it's the associated problem with the cuts. Do they have scars? Are they irregular? Is one of them deep and perforated? Do they have associated problems like Fuchs dystrophy on the back of the cornea, scarring on the front of the cornea? All that, if you can imagine, is really what makes them uniquely different, each eye. All right, so just having many cuts doesn't may, mean you sit at home depressed, nobody can do anything. No, I want every doctor to fight and help you. So when you come to me with RK, I first look for what I call my vision potential. Just wearing a contact lens on our RKI will make you see, but just think about it. That is not helping the problem. Think about your RK cornea as having broken bones, right? You can't just wear a crutch and start walking and believe everything is normal. Of course you can walk with the crutch or see with the contact. But underneath that, you're further deteriorating, your RK is getting flatter, your scars are increasing, and you get more irregular and more difficult to fix you later. So very careful please, contact lenses do have a role, but after a doctor has surgically tried their best to help you with your vision, and then the rest dual vision can be helped with the contact, right? Because as I've explained to you before, a hard contact or a scleral contact lens is like a Superman suit. All right? In front, you have a six pack. You take off the contact lens at night and you have a flabby waist behind that, but that's the true person that you have become from your RK, correct? So the flabby waist means the flabby cornea and the cornea really cannot see. So once you remove the contact, you can't see. So that's my concept of how a contact lens should be used. It's very useful, but post-surgical correction, not just slap it on a cornea, make people see, and they don't realize they're getting worse underneath it. And that's not their real vision, it's artificial. Now, when a patient arrives to me from any part of the world, I look at potential of vision. If they're at an age where the lens is very clear, the natural lens is very clear, I do laser plastique, a surgery where without cutting the cornea, without making a flap like LASIK, with I gently shape the RK cornea, it's called new carpet on broken tiles. I shape your cornea into a perfect sphere. Remember, vision is all about shape of the cornea. Make it a perfect sphere 
and bring it back to normal, neither too steep nor too flat, and correct it from a football into a perfect basketball. And patients start seeing despite the cuts that are there. While doing this, I can also correct the scars because it's a corneoplastique based treatment that I've been doing. So I not only correct the shape, I also correct the scars and the patients are immediately seeing and then they get better over time and they're seeing without glasses and contact in most cases. Now, if they have lens changes, meaning their lens has become cloudy, which is quite common, right? When you cross into late 50s or early 60s years of age. Now, if I just do laser plastic on the cornea, I'm leaving one of the culprits behind the lens. Remember, all of us as we age will develop cloudy lenses, which is called a cataract. So, by leaving this lens cloudy, I will have done a disservice if I do laser plastic. So, I go after the lens-based surgery. I enter this eye and I work on the lens, a concept that I have uh, proprietary treatment that is called lensoplastic. Not just cataract surgery, but lens-based surgery where I work on your lens, remove your cataract, and use optics in such a way that I cancel the impact of your RK cornea without touching the cornea. And you're done forever, no need for cataract surgery in the future. This is more interventional, I'm in your eye, this is more outside your eye. This, I may do both eyes together sometime, depending on how far you've traveled from. In this case, I always like to do one eye at a time, because remember, you are less predictable than a normal eye. I want to see how well you have landed with your outcome, that I can proceed to your second eye. Got it? So this lens that we use to replace your natural lens. There are about 34 lens choices, different kinds of technologies. There's a lot of advertising and hype going around the lenses to be used here. Think about it. If the lens could make you see, that means your RK cornea is so normal, your windshield is so normal, any lens can make you see. That's why it's very important because a lot of patients come to us complaining that they fell for some advertising, some new lens doctors kept saying, they put it in and now they don't see. You have to take into account the broken windshield because your RK cornea is permanent. Correct? You are looking through a broken glass. You, there's nothing that can take that away because that's 95% deep unless you do a transplant. I don't want you to have a transplant because that doesn't give you vision without glasses. Right? We know all that. More invasive, or rejection, everything else. So you're looking through a broken cornea. You cannot ever think that putting just a lens in the eye will make you see through it. That's, that's a wrong concept. That's why all these people come here unhappy and we are fixing them. So to do this surgery, you have to have the lensoplastic concept, experience and ability to not only do the lens-based surgery here, but you do it in a way that you cancel the optics of the cornea, make you see despite the anatomical problem that you have and you always have. That's the very big important part, so lensoplastic. Now, you can even do combination surgery. In certain cases, if I feel I may do lensoplastic, then come out three months later on stability and do lensoplastic. Now I've completely erased the history of your RKI and you're seeing excellent. Additional things that I do for patients once they have great vision, sometimes they're flying back for their post-op to me, I will then do my moist therapy. Remember, I've explained this in my previous teachings. Moist therapy to increase their tears in front of the eye. That's very important because the RK cornea is all broken if you have a great layer of tears in front of your cornea, just like your windshield, when the windshield wipers go across, you start seeing clearly. That helps even more in your vision and decreases the fluctuation. Remember that's the problem with RK, a lot of fluctuation that you have. Two reasons your fluctuations decrease after these surgeries is one, the pendulum is now so tight between the two endpoints where we have landed that it doesn't sway so much that you see the difference. Second, the tear film and the surgery, new carpet tightens up on the broken tile, makes you more stable. Are you with me? That's the way I do that. So there is no limits to how we can fix an RK, real keratotomy eye. How we can do 34 different lens options in the lens area. We can do over 18 different techniques of laser plastic out here. We can combine the techniques. Worst case scenarios, I've even had to do a lamellar graft where I go between your RK, remove that top layer, not a full transplant, replace it with a donor, and then six months later do laser plastic or lens plastic. So visual surgeries can be done in an RKI, no matter how bad it is, and make them see. So no RK patient, no real keratotic patient should be sitting at home as nothing can be done. And please, please, please do not fall for any advertising or gimmick of here's a new lens or here's this. Just think logically. Your front windshield has to be addressed because that's cracked and broken for life. Another thing is just slapping on a contact lens and seeing and feeling good about it doesn't make sense because long term, nothing underneath has been addressed. You're still walking with a broken bone. That's going to degenerate more, damage more, and now your ability to recover vision from there
keeps decreasing over time. So my philosophy as a doctor who's very, uh, always wanting to encourage my colleagues and love my patients is, please be logical in your choices. Think long term. You first want it to be surgically fixed and then go ahead if residual vision needed, some kind of contact lenses. Now, I get some questions sometimes, some patients call and they go, uh, doctor, we had RK and we had trouble now. Will this again, we will, are we again signing up for more trouble? Answer is no. Remember, when your RK was done, you were a normal eye, a virgin eye, which is very predictable, and the surgery was easy, done on top of your cornea with drops. The surgery I have to do is much more difficult. I'm going inside the eye, trying to correct everything and come out and mostly without stitches, enjoying the experience with you. Even these surgeries are done, these cataract techniques, lensoplastic and RKIs are done right here at our institute in our surgical suite, which is actually called a spa. It's, it's actually registered by the U.S. Patent and Trademark Office for its uniqueness, its technology, its ambience, and, uh, and the compassion. No rush, one patient at a time, even though these surgeries take me hours to plan on the weekend before you all land. Uh, the surgery itself takes about 15 uh, to 20 minutes uh, with numbing drops. So, very important for you to understand all this is possible. Yes, you all are complex. Uh, yes, it is less predictable than a normal eye, but the fight is worth it. You all deserve it, right? So, very important, please understand this concept. It can be further enhanced with tears. All these logic, holistic approach is what I really am teaching uh, all over the world. I want doctors to know you can't just stop with something, uh, put a lens in or this, and then hope to see that you see. It has to be a plan. And we've done, like I said, patients with extreme RK problems. Even they can be staged to vision. So, radial keratotomy patients do not need despair. You can be helped no matter what age or stage you're at. Make some logical choices. Please don't just fall for things and gimmicks. Uh, ask questions. Ask questions, please. There's lots of stuff there. If doctors are advertising, ask to see their surgeries, ask to see uh, results over years, over decades maybe. Ask for patients beyond the local geography. Uh, how many people were done, what's the outcome. Just ask questions. Every doctor is out there to help you. But it is your duty to do your due diligence. So, having had RK in the past, of course you had an experience where you feel you lost your vision now, but this whole thing is a necessity, it's not a choice anymore. At that time, that was a choice you did with a surgery that was not so predictable and done very easily on the outside of your cornea. This is more needed, more comprehensive, more intense for the doctor and more difficult to predict, but it's needed because now at your age, we already have cataracts, something needs to be done. And to do it logically is where the choice comes in. For your eyes, Dr. Kalani.